I mentioned that it is associated with um, inflammatory bowel disease. So there are two forms of inflammatory bowel disease. There's one called ulcerative colitis, and ulcerative colitis is a condition that just affects uh, a patient's colon. And uh, another condition is called Crohn's disease that can really affect any part of the gut. Um, it's much more common that we see patients with ulcerative colitis, and by far the majority of our patients do have ulcerative colitis. And even if they have no symptoms, I think uh, all patients with PSC should undergo a screening colonoscopy to look for that condition because it is so common. And we've had plenty of people within the clinic who've had no symptoms and we've found uh, features of ulcerative colitis when we do that colonoscopy. The other thing that's important is, as well as just looking, you need to have biopsies taken as well, because sometimes it can look normal, but under the microscope it can look abnormal as well. So it's key that, that that's been done if you, have, if you do have PSC. The interesting thing about the ulcerative colitis we see with PSC is it seems to be a, a, a slightly different condition to the normal ulcerative colitis that we see in clinical practice. It affects different parts of the colon, so it seems to affect the right side more. It spares parts of the colon and, and, and seems to run a, different, a, a slightly different clinical course. We know um, when people's PSC gets bad that, the, that people's inflammatory bowel disease in fact calms down and then often actually after they're transplanted it can get worse again. Uh, it also has implications um, uh, because for, for things like the, the PSC coming back after a transplant. We've shown in this center, if, you've got, if you have your colon removed before a transplant, you do not get recurrent PSC. Whereas if your colon is intact and you've got inflammatory bowel disease, there is a risk of the PSC coming back. So there are lots of links, and we think that in many ways, inflammatory bowel disease may be a driver within, with this condition. What can we as do as doctors to try and prevent things happening in the future? Well, number one, if you've got um, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you may or may not know, there is a higher risk of colonic cancer with having ulcerative colitis and PSC than uh, the general population. Now, this is not to say that you know, everyone's going to get colonic cancer, uh, but, but there is a higher risk, and therefore it's important that we look at people's uh, colons on a yearly basis. And this is important because it's such a preventable condition. Uh, colonic cancer comes from a very small growth, you may have heard of polyps, that then grows into eventually into a cancer. So if you catch it early and you whip off that polyp, uh, or you find some abnormal cells in the colon, you can either take off the polyp or even in extreme circumstances take someone's colon out before the cancer comes. So it's absolutely key to have that regular colonoscopy on a yearly basis. That's the first aspect of surveillance we talk about. We also recommend our patients have uh, uh, an ultrasound on a, on a yearly basis. Um, now that helps us with looking at the liver and talking about staging, but it's, we also survey the gallbladder. There's a very small risk of developing tumors within the gallbladder. And we therefore know if we see polyps appearing and they get over a certain size, that again, that gallbladder should be coming out. And so that is, as well as staging the disease, it's a way of surveilling, surveying that, um, that, uh, that, that, that gallbladder for, for polyps. Finally, as, as, as part of surveillance, people often talk about um, uh, bile duct cancer because there is that risk in PSC. Now, sadly, there isn't an effective uh, surveillance program for that, and therefore uh, we don't have something at present. That might change over time, um, but we don't have a test or, 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 or something that we can do that can look for that regularly, and so we don't recommend something for that. Uh, but I, I, I would say a lot of doctors do do a fairly regular MRCP, again, to keep an eye on those bile ducts, maybe every three years. But that's that, 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 that would vary between clinics, I would say.